As we go blasting into the new year, I want to spend this episode looking at the upcoming Web3 trends for 2023. Decentralized Metaverse is a hot trend just about everywhere right now, with everyone from Facebook to Microsoft pulling together their ideas for the next level of the internet. Proponents of the Web3 future, however, have their own ideas, and it doesn't involve platforms controlled by Silicon Valley giants. Decentraland and The Sandbox are probably the two most visible examples of decentralized metaverse platforms, meaning the server where the data is hosted has no individual owner who can censor activity. Decentralized virtual environments are a core part of the vision for where Web3 will take us in the next decade. And in 2023, we can expect the pioneers to continue to lay the groundwork that could eventually make it a reality. Next up is decentralized social networks. Currently, corporations such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have the final say over what can and cannot be said on their sites. One of the goals of the Web3 movement is to create a decentralized social network where users would pay a tiny amount of cryptocurrency every time they posted a message, and in doing so, this would deter trolling and spam bots. In exchange, these users would have the right to say whatever they want without censorship. Collectible smart contracts, commonly known as NFTs, are unique tokens of information that exist on a blockchain. Most people have probably heard of NFTs as pieces of digital artwork that frequently sell for thousands, if not millions of dollars at auction. However, sales of digital art is only one use case for collectible smart contracts, and those who believe in the future of a decentralized Web3 say that their true value will lie in tokenizing items, data, and even ideas in the digital and physical domains. In 2023, the emphasis will be on NFTs that do something, sometimes known as utility NFTs, such as keys we use to unlock and interact with the digital products and services we buy. Greenifying Web3 is a major pain point for most blockchain projects. Overall, the energy consumption for all Web3 products are growing at an unsustainable rate. There have been concerted efforts to reduce the amount of energy while retaining the usefulness of blockchain and associated Web3 technologies. In 2023, we can expect increasing efforts to be put into achieving green aims. Most notably, the Ethereum network recently completed its switchover from proof of work to proof of stake algorithm, leading to a reported 98% reduction to the overall amount of energy used on the network. And last but not least is Web3 regulation. As the impact of Web3 continues to grow, governmental intervention is an inevitability. But don't be afraid, this isn't always a bad thing. In 2022, Colorado became the first state to officially accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment for taxes. Dubai created new economic programs designed to attract Web3 companies, designating itself as the Web3 capital through progressive regulations and robust infrastructure. In 2023, we will see more and more governments around the world making changes to their policy to streamline Web3 growth. In conclusion, the term Web3 covers a number of trends that make up what is sometimes called the decentralized internet. The vision here is to create an internet that isn't controlled by huge corporations like Google and Facebook that set most of the rules about what we can and cannot do online today. The idea behind Web3 is that technologies like blockchain, cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens, and decentralized autonomous organizations give us the tools we need to create online spaces that we truly own, that could potentially lead to the implementation of digital democracies. And we got some real Hingle McCringleberries in Web3 news as Web3 startups raised $7.1 billion in funding in 2022. Binance plans to invest in India's Web3 startups and Google hires former BlockFi executive to lead Web3 charge. And for our first story, crypto winter isn't chilling VCs from investing in Web3. What is chilling? This is a picture of this goober they put on the main article here, but that's neither here nor there. What I want to talk about is how this crypto winter is scaring a lot of people. The markets are red. There's blood on the streets. It's kind of boring right now to invest in any kind of Web3 company because it's not really going where. And most of the press is bad press saying that the, the sky is going to continue falling. And I would actually argue that maybe 
maybe all the bad press is already priced in. This could be potentially the bottom for the Web3 markets, and this might be the best time ever to invest. I'm being very vague with my responses because I'm just a guy in a Hawaiian shirt talking to people on YouTube, but it is an awesome time to be getting, uh, wrapping your mind around the Web3 space at the very least, do your education and due diligence because it's not going anywhere, and I'm not the only one to think so. Check this out. A 16Z leads a hundred million dollar raise for Web3. This is in December. This is an old news. This is December 15th. We have Anchorage Digital, a hundred million dollar Web3 opportunity from December 13th. We have a new 60 million dollar Web3 fund from Alexar that's going to support Polygon Circle exposure. And what you know what? There was 4.5 billion extra dollars invested into Web3 companies during 2022. In total, 7.1 billion dollars in funding during 2022. GameFi or Play to Earn Gaming accounted for 62% of that. What does that tell everybody? Well, that it's not going anywhere. You know, as much as we want to look at the FTX scandal and the blood on the streets and the inflation woes and Ukraine war, Russia might drop a nuke, you know, China's about to invade Taiwan, like all this bad stuff is happening, yet VCs are dumping hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars into the Web3 space because they see the unlimited potential and they see the opportunity here. And this should be evidence to all of my viewers out here that big stuff is coming. $7.1 billion in one year invested into dozens of different Web3 companies is proof that something big is coming. Not a big crash or disaster is coming. It means $7.1 billion of change is about to take place on planet Earth, a lot of reason to be very excited in the Web3 space. Binance plans to invest in India's Web3 startups, hire local talent from top universities. So Binance, being a Chinese-based company, is investing in its neighbor, India. India to soon be the most populated country on planet Earth. They are on track to have more citizens than China by 2030. And so Binance sees the opportunity. Let's invest in that growth while they're also investing in China's growth as well. What this really, what you should extrapolate from this is that Asian Pacific countries are going to have a significant lead over the West and over European countries as well. We're going to see a massive technological boom coming out of Asia in the coming years. Hong Kong legislator firm to lure 1,000 Web3 startups over three years. This isn't $1,000 they're investing. This isn't 1,000 people that they're hiring. This is 1,000 Web3 startup companies they plan to lure into Hong Kong over the next three years. 333 companies per year on average are going to be growing inside of Hong Kong alone over the next three years. What does this tell you? That Asian Pacific companies are about to have a large lead in the Web3 space. These are smart people. They are doing the math. They know the science. Uh, they put in the due diligence. And they uh, are telling us with their pockets, pretty much, and their wallets that Web3 is something you do not want to sleep on. There's a lot of opportunity here. And we as individuals should also be doing that same kind of uh, investment, whether it's with our time, with our education, with our money. Do your own research and get some exposure to Web3 because holy crap, Asian Pacific company, country, countries and companies are taking off with it right now. Google hires former BlockFi executive to leave Web3 charge in what? Asian Pacific countries. Again, we are going to have massive growth in the Web3 and it's going to come from the East. And so this is just more evidence of the fact that like, holy crap, big things are coming. I know we want to look in the present and be like, oh man, you know, it's only going to get worse. Like this is such a bummer. You know, where should I be you know, putting my money? We'll put it in Web3. Do your research, find a company you believe in, invest in where you can, get exposure when and where you can, because big things are coming. The biggest companies in the world, large companies are investing by the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars into the Web3 space. It gets me excited. I'm trying to get you excited as well. Huge things are coming for Web3. Web3 needs seamless infrastructure to drive adoption. This is true. 
across the board, whether you're trying to get cryptocurrency or NFTs, play to earn games, or even just build your own Web3 company, there is a massive barrier to entry. It's like taking the SATs, trying to get anything done these days. You have to move funds into this wallet, convert it if you want to bridge it over to Polygon and blah, blah, blah. You got to then set up a wallet, do the KYC, get the verification. You just got to learn the jargon. Then you can, once you learn the jargon, then you actually have to go through the steps, right? Like what does KYC mean? No one knows, if you're uninitiated, you don't know what that means. And so you have to do all of these crazy steps just to participate in Web3, even in a very small way. And so we need seamless infrastructure to drive mass adoption. We need our mothers and fathers, grandparents, uh, and even children to be able to use this in order to drive mass adoption. So we need seamless infrastructure. We need ways for us to buy it with one click with our credit card, no fuss, no muss, no confusion, and we're not there yet. And what that really tells me is we're early. We are so early on. Because it's complicated, that tells me this is a great investment opportunity. When things are complex, not many people get into it. So if you're willing to do all of that homework, all of the due diligence, jump over all those hurdles to claim your stake in the future, you have earned the rewards of that investment and time. And so I think this is a great opportunity to be getting exposure to it while it's complicated. And once things become easy, that maybe that's the time to start selling. And I'm just a guy in a Hawaiian shirt talking to people on YouTube. Don't take me at face value, do your own research, not financial advice. But it tells me as a fun uncle that we are early and this is a great time to wet your beak. And my last story is about the Tiffany's NF TIFFs, which are the worst thing that I have seen come out in Web3 in a long time. I wanted to talk about them as a product to avoid. This is bad press. I want to make sure everyone knows this is bad press. I hate this product. This is terrible. I hope no one ever uses these things or buys these things. This is another shameless crash, cash grab by a giant company. Let's just think about for a minute uh, the, the Donald Trump NFTs. You know, 40,000 people traded those bad boys and they have dropped in value by 98%. A lot of people were left holding the bags on that cash grab. Donald Trump made all the money and all of his fucking cronies made all the money and ran off with it. And we, the people, are left holding that bag. Do not fall for this trap. These Tiffany's NF TIFFs, maybe, maybe they will have a short-term rally. Maybe there'll be a little bit of good press about them for a month or two as they shoot up in price, but get out if you got in as quickly as you possibly can. This is a fire that I see coming from a mile away, and I want to warn my, all my viewers, do not touch these with a 30-foot pole. And now it's time for my favorite part of the show. It's the Web3 Lounge where I get to kick it heck of tough with my nieces and nephews. That's you, the audience members on YouTube watching this show. And I am your fun uncle delivering enthusiasm and good vibes in every way I can, starting with just talking about the broader macroeconomic state of the world. I am freaking like pumped on the world right now. Honestly, I think that all the bad news is behind us, like the pandemic. We made it through COVID and we as a species are now like taking care of ourselves. We're washing our hands. We're wearing our masks. We're telling other people when we're sick. We're not going into work when we're sick. I think we've made a lot of cultural movements as a people to help alleviate pandemic pressures moving forward. And that's why monkeypox was just kind of like a scare tactic in the news that really didn't go anywhere. You know, when it comes to the Ukraine crisis, I don't think Russia is going to drop a nuke. They want Ukraine and they want Ukraine in a usable place. So they're not going to be dropping nukes all over it. I think if anything, Ukraine might actually make a push and start claiming pieces of Russia. And so that's positive news there as well. Um, I think that as far as inflation and the market dropping even more, I'm starting to think that all of that bad press is priced into the markets. The markets have always already accounted for the fact that things are bad and inflation is bad and that and that rates are going to keep going up throughout the year. And so it just gives me hope that like, huh, maybe the bottom is in, you know, maybe the bottom is in because you look at December. A lot of people want to do tax harvesting in December. 
Not that not a lot had happened because I think people had already harvested their losses for taxes. So in December, we didn't see a big dip from tax harvesting. And, uh, and then as we go into the new year, it's good news. Things are going up. Even Solana is going up. All this bad press about FTX, the dust is settling on that. And I actually read an article about how uh, FTX is nothing when you compare it to the Mt. Gox scandal back in 2017. Mt. Gox was horrific. Oh, that's funny. I'm leaving that in for sure. <laughs> I'm leaving that in the take. Uh, Mt. Gox, I'm so excited. <laughs> But Mt. Gox was way worse. 70% of Bitcoin was held on Mt. Gox when that crumbled and Bitcoin powered through and made it to an even higher new all-time high, which is $69,000. And so it just gives me hope that like we're through it. You know, sure, there might be another couple bad pieces of press that come out in 2023. I'm expecting a relief rally across the board in not just cryptocurrencies, but NFTs, play to earn games, Web3 in general. We're going to see all of this venture capital money, multiple billions of dollars of venture capital money. I'll remind you of that, that have gone into Web3. We're going to see the fruits of that labor start to come out by the end of this year. All those play to earn games that delayed their launch because the market was so nasty are going to see positive things in the future. It's like the groundhog seeing its shadow. Like, oh, wow, things are getting better. Time to climb out of my hole and release this game finally. I'm looking at you, Synergy Land. And just 2023 is going to be great. You know, I can even see Bitcoin hitting $35,000 some point this year. Honest to God, mark, I'm marking the tape right now. You can check it. It's going to live on YouTube. I think $35,000 sometime this year. But it'll be temporary. We have an election coming up. Donald Trump kind of sucks. And Joe Biden, he also sucks. And it looks like that's all the Republicans and Democrats have to offer is a turd sandwich and a big old douche. And so we're just going to have to deal with that one stroke at a time. But nevertheless, I'm enthusiastic. I think we have net positive going into 2023. I think the worst is behind us. We as a culture are better people. And I see a lot of promise in the broader Web3 space. And so I'm excited to be back in the saddle. I had a really awesome Christmas and an even better New Year's. Uh, I did them all. I did the Hanukkahs, I did the, did the Kwanzaa's, and I did the one with the big old fat guy. Did all of that stuff and I loved it. Maybe ate and drank too much. It's showing in the chin. I'm hitting the gym, squeezing it out. And I'm also stoked that I've got leaders like Gifted and Nifty Q who are also hitting the ground running this year with uh, GM Web3 and the the NFT live show. I'm proud of you guys. Your strength gives me strength. Your hope gives me hope. And so with that, stay tuned for more fun, uncle, and get excited about a Web3 in 2023. Do you like crypto, NFTs, and video games? Well, the Fun Uncle YouTube page is your one-stop shop for all of my content across all networks and platforms. You wanna make sure to hit the link down in the description below and join me today. You do not wanna miss out on any of this content because I work diligently to demystify the complexities of blockchain technology.